Okay, I want to call the regular board meeting for March 16th, 2023 to order. Call the roll. Suzanne Arthur. Here. Chris Bailey. Here. Scott Powers. Yeah. Megan Smith. Here. Teresa Wallace. Here. We have a quorum. And we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, and justice for all. The screen was shaking while we were scanning. Do we have anyone who wishes to? participate in any public participation on the agenda items for tonight. When we left here from the last meeting, we didn't realize that the board reached its decision that quickly from executive session. We have never been to a board meeting, let alone go into executive session. I was ignorant to the language and the process. This is why I asked Mrs. Wallace after the meeting, what she meant because I didn't understand what had just happened. I was under the impression that the board would render a decision in 10 days. It wasn't until later that evening after listening to the motion by Mrs. Wallace several more times that we realized we already received our answer. I am requesting that this board reconsider its motion to support that the administration acted reasonably under the circumstances. We have read your response to our complaint and I'm not trying to be disrespectful However, there are several statements that are just not accurate due to the board receiving information that isn't factual. Before you approve the minutes of last month's meeting, I respectfully request that you take another look at the response times and policies. It is mentioned several times that this was a student misconduct. Examples of student misconduct is cheating on a test and disrespecting staff members which are in fact wrong, but not criminal. What you saw that happened to Kylie was in fact a serious criminal attack on a defenseless girl. This was not handled as such. What those girls did could lay them in the department, into the Department of Youth Services for six months or until the 21st birthday. If you don't believe me, ask the court. The court took that very serious on those girls and they are still in jail. By the board stating that administration acted reasonably tells me that if your own daughter or son or grandchild was thrown to the ground and punched over 30 times in the head, that you would be okay with not receiving a phone call for over an hour and 13 minutes later. Even when she's crying and complains of a headache and wants to go home, we are still not called for another 33 minutes. I would hope that you would fight like hell for your kids and not accept that as being responsible. Our intention in December was to bring attention that this was not handled correctly and wanted an acknowledgement that this type of incident would be handled differently in the future. But before you can fix a problem, you first have to acknowledge a problem exists. A violent criminal act with a victim that may be injured must be handled differently than your student misconduct issues. You continue to say that the board decision is final. However, we disagree. The State Board of Education is doing its own investigation, as I'm sure this board is aware of. Please do the right thing and stand up for Kylie and other kids that are victims of violence. Please reconsider your vote before you approve the minutes of last month's meeting. Thank you, Mr. Hackney. Anyone else want to address the board on an agenda item? Okay, if not, we will go on to um, uh, presentation. Oh, I'm sorry. I was speaking to our other community members out here too when I um, say what I'm going to say. Most of the community knows the assault that took place at Greenview Middle School on December 2, 2022. Most of the community also knows how grossly negligent every aspect of the situation was handled by the principal, Ms. Callaward. 
It took Ms. Callower an hour and 13 minutes after the assault took place to even call a parent. When Ms. Callower did Mrs. find Hagney, me, Mrs. Well, you Hagney. know what, this is my, no, 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 no. You can't shut me down. At the end. I, res I respectfully the end. ask. This is new okay, stuff. Get out when we're ready. At the end. We need to not speak sp of specific staff members in a public forum. All right, anyone else? Is that a board policy in regards to not naming a public staff, uh, staff member in public forum? We want to be respectful. I, I understand that, but is that a board policy? I don't know that that's a board policy. I'm not certain. I disrespect my daughter, we didn't call us. Okay. All right. This is not an open discussion. This is not an open discussion. Okay. All right. We are moving on to the presentation the high school media lab has for us tonight. Thank you for being here. It's fun. We're trying to be happy. Okay. Uh, awesome. Good things. Positive, positive things. That's good. Um, Danny Klosterman, I teach digital communications uh, with Mrs. Beam across the way who teaches graphic design uh, presentation. Uh, I'll talk about myself first. Uh, I began, I took over this class about five years ago from Cindy Mash, uh, who created the program, She's the teacher in our district for, uh, man, a long time. <laughs> and uh, she started the program and I got a chance to take it over. And it's been, uh, I think one of the favorite parts of my day uh, uh, I'm an English teacher, first and foremost, and I want to hopefully prepare my students to be effective communicators and uh, good, good critical thinkers, and digital communications is a uh, part of that. So go to the next slide, I can tell you some more specifics. Yeah, we got a clicker up there for you. There you go, all right. <laughs> Uh, some of the software we use in digital communications, we use something called Adobe Premiere Pro, which is what professional uh, grade movie studios will use. Uh, it's a soft design software program that, um, you know, if you were to walk into any major studio, they would have that same software. So it's kind of cool that our kids get to use the same kind of playground that, uh, that professionals use. Uh, we also use Canva, which is a cloud-based design program. Uh, it's kind of like a cheat code for making things look really cool. And we use that a lot. We also use something called Production Crate, which is a media assets library. Uh, it basically has kind of all the cool little details you would see in a movie, the special effects, et cetera. So I teach uh, two classes, digital communications one and two, and then advanced digital communications. They're essentially the same class, but advanced is for kids who've been in the program for a year. Um, our hardware, everything we got, we uh, received from a very generous donation from a grant from the uh, Green Foundation and uh, includes things like iMac desktop computers. We have 20 uh, camera kits, iPad Pros and Apple Pencils. Uh, my personal favorite thing is the Rode, Rodecaster uh, podcast studio. So we can make podcasts along with our Sling Studio live stream video production program. In the classroom, we do uh, the morning announcements every uh, morning. We produce every other week or so a collection of videos made by the students called Green Views. And then our podcast, we're still trying to figure out and get off the ground which we call Greencast. Uh, for the district, we've done promotional videos. We've live streamed broadcasts for uh, concerts and things, especially during uh, uh, kind of the height of the pandemic. During summer school, I got a chance to work with the kindergarten through sixth grade students at summer school and teach them some fun things, which is pretty cool. And then there's the potential. Uh, I've worked with Mr. Uh, Pate to hopefully start an uh, elementary school reading program sometime in the next year called Read View or Green Reads. <laughs> something with our name uh, for the community we hope to do other promotional videos live stream broadcasting community right. history type events once we've uh, become more established we had uh all of our repeating students graduated last year so we have i currently have uh 20 kids and they're all new so we had to kind of start from scratch but uh me talking about it is pretty boring so instead <sighs> I, I brought some videos and examples a lot of these things you can find on our youtube page we post there uh, frequently, uh, many, many things. Uh, but the main thing, I'm actually gonna skip over this if I can, or I'm gonna play it once and it'll be loud. Here we go, all right. I made a video where I interviewed three <laughs> students and hopefully this will give you an idea. That's our YouTube page right there. Uh, and hopefully they'll do a better job speaking than I will, so. <laughs> we 
we make it full screen, Mr. Davis? Do you know, or just tap the screen? Mm -hmm. I got you. Mm -hmm. I can you know what? For those. Yeah. Great job. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so, uh, so here's, uh, I think I could take you guys to the lab. This is the only sound coming through your. Uh, <laughs> I don't know that guy. I'm a senior, and it's my first year of a con. I really enjoy this class because there's a lot of freedom in it. I get to decide what I do, and it's really, really relaxed because certain due dates and stuff, and like having like a set plan that allows me to do what I want, but still a format to it. And just for how they do, I really like making those for the athletes because I know myself would have liked those. And I just think it's cool to go to the games and see them and then get, get a little video. I know for our basketball team we're going to be playing in, I can probably get my hands on the computer and make a couple videos for us to promote our um, sports teams and everything. So they already do that on everything. And I'd like to help making more videos for them. Um, Brady Rattler. This is my first year here at home and I'm a junior. I love being able to use Premiere Pro as like an outlet because I've always had different creative outlets. So I used to draw when I was younger. I used to do a little bit of painting. I used to make a little bit of music. And now this is just my next outlet that I use. One of the things that I've really loved to use is different equipment, so like our cameras. I find them fascinating. My mom's a photographer, so I have help there. But just learning my way around a camera, learning my way around the new computers and different utensils we have in our lab has really helped me develop better videos. When I was younger, I never really knew what I wanted to do for a career. And I always just kind of wanted to be an engineer like my dad. But doing this class kind of made me realize that there is actually something out of one of my hobbies that I can make a career out of. And so I plan on going somewhere in digital media. Christopher Phillips. I'm a sophomore and it's my first year of digital communication. I, everything in this class, I learned this year. I didn't know anything about Adobe, anything about After Effects. And then this class allowed me to learn everything I know about it. And I'm doing crazy things with Adobe. I can never do it like I know. So the fact that I have the technology and do things, is, in this class, we have a lot of freedom. And I like that, the fact that we can go out and film things. Uh, one of the things that we have filmed is hall monitors. And that's a really fun experience to go out and do things. We've also done a podcast, the Internet of Magic, and that is also really fun. At the beginning of the year, I didn't quite know what I want to do for a job. I was kind of thinking photography or something in digital media. And I took this class and it convinced me to go into digital media. So my plan is to go to the Career Center and learn there, but I wouldn't be going to the career center for this job if I didn't have this. I think that's a theme what Chris said throughout the class. Uh, we've had a lot of kids who maybe were a bit aimless, didn't know what they wanted to do, and then as a result of the class and the program and the experience, they were able to experience some really cool things, and so, and that hopefully changed some lives, which, you know, I think is, is my goal as a teacher, so uh, but, uh, that is to be. Um, so I teach the graphic art uh, portion that the lab uses. Um, I'm the art teacher at the high school. Um, and so I am in my studio class, but then we have the lab across the hall. And so um, um, so we use uh, similar programs. It's all on the um, Adobe Creative Cloud that we have a site license for at the school. 
and I teach Photoshop and advanced Photoshop and then Illustrator and advanced Illustrator every other year. So um, we also use Canva. And like we said, it's a nice free program. So um, Adobe products are very expensive. So it's nice to kind of give them a taste of what that is, but also give them something that's accessible to them, even on their phones or their tablets, if they can't afford to use the Adobe products um, outside of class. And then there's other websites that have free stock images. Um, Vectezy and Brushezy are something we use in, in conjunction with things we download for the Adobe products. Um, like I said, I teach intro and advanced versions of Photoshop and Illustrator, um, odd or even years. And then I've also acquired yearbook. And so I use that twice, the lab twice a day um, to teach those. The CTE on the end of there is the career tech, I got career tech certified so that our students can stay at our school and get um, the possibility of a college credit if they complete um, the advanced and intro version of each of those and pass a web exam. So it's an opportunity where they could stay in our building instead of go to the career center, but still gain um, college credits if they choose to do so. Um, here's a few pictures of students in action in my area. It's really cool to share the space with um, a different form of creativity too. So seeing all the videos is fun. Like, oh, let me do that too. But uh, um, we do still things instead. <laughs> And there's Paul. Um, and so I had a full of 20 people in the intro, and then we have about 14 or 15 in the advanced version of that. And then in the lower right hand corner, we have Jordan using the uh, we have 10 um, iPad Pro that we're testing out this year with the Apple pencils. And that's been a really cool kind of mobile way. And so the students like different ways to interact with um, the materials. Um, I also have a large format printer that the district bought a couple years ago, which is in the upper right hand corner there. And um, that's used for our building, for our district, and also for jobs that um, we sub out from our people in the community. Um, as Danny stated, we have the iMac computer. So there's those beautiful white clean machines, um, the camera kits uh, we have, and then also the iPad Pros um, that I took a picture of there. So it's a nice variety of materials. We have um, 12 camera kits that we share mm -hmm. um, that we were able to purchase with the money that was donated as well as the yearbook budget so that we have plenty of um, identical tools that are up to date for our students to use. Mm -hmm. um, in the classroom, I do projects um, that deal with product design. Um, we create business and personal logos. We work on yearbook spreads. Um, we create and design flyers and posters. We've done greeting cards. Um, I have student-led designs. A lot of kids want to do things for uh, their programs like FFA, and so they can come in and design things, and then it goes up on the walls in our building, and so they get to see their artwork. Um, for the district, I've done, if you ever go to the middle school and you see like the muffins with mom or the room zoom, those things are designed by people in our district, and then I print them, and then they can be used um, we have spirit day posters, we do dance tickets for the high school, which saves us a ton of money. Um, I've done flyers and stickers, weird teacher requests, there's just a lot of different things that we have the ability. Um, and then for the community, we had the opportunity for one of my graphic design classes to design a logo for uh, the local fire and EMS station. So they're in the process of choosing a design that they're going to use for their new t-shirts. Um, and then different banners and posters and things. Um, so it's just, it's really cool to have the, that space you walk in and it's just like, you get that wow factor. And so I taught, I started the graphic design program when I started here eight years ago, and we were on little 10 inch <laughs> MacBooks that maybe were there when I was in school and in a dirty, you know, ceramic studio. So mm -hmm. this has just been a huge opportunity for us. So it's, we've been very grateful to have this very high tech space. And I think it just, um, lends itself for the students to feel responsibility of like this big screen and be able to do things. I have kids all the time that, you know, can I stay during study hall or come down after school? And so it really sparks that interest in that group of students that had Danny had mentioned that, you know, maybe wouldn't have their place, but now they're finding this creative window that um, that they either continue with us or find things at the career center. Yeah. It's been kind of cool so. to see it, even kids who want to stay after school, like, hey, Mr. Callum, you can be here. So I can keep working. Your son's done that a few yeah. times. Uh, um, side note, you're an excellent podcast oh. uh, uh, guest. You did a good job on that one. So, um, anyway, it's been a it's been a joy. It's also I love sharing space with Molly. We have a lot of fun and uh, keep each other sane and creative and all those good things. So it's been it's been a really good time. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
board have any questions before we lose them? <clears throat> All right, thank you right. so much for thank coming. You. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Steve. Thank you. Mr. K. All right, we are now report. Item three, the treasurer's report. Do I have a motion to approve the agenda? I'll move. I'll second. Mrs. Arthur? Yes. Mr. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Powers? Yeah. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mrs. Wallace. Yes. Motion passes. B, approve the minutes of the regular board meeting February 16th, 2023. C, approve the February financial reports. D, approve February month end activity advances. E, approve donations as attached. Um, I'm sure I read those. Mr. And Mrs. Mitchell Rowland, $500. Mr. and Mrs. Chester Rose, $250. Patricia Vinson, $30. Bill and Ann Rowland, $100. First Church of Fairborn, $60. Greenview Stenhouse, $425. Marie and Eddie McKenzie, $100. Thelma Martin, $25. Greenview Flower Fund, $40. So those were various donations to Greenview High School in memory of Alan Rowland. And then also the donation of the Life Back machine valued at $240 from Doris and Dennis Evers. F, approve adjusted estimated receipts for February 2023. G, approve amended appropriations for February 2023. H, approve the resolution accepting the Green County Budget Commission rates for the year beginning January 1st, 2023. I, approve a then and now in the amount of 2,120 for paid schools. And J, approve the treasury report items A through I as presented. Do I have a motion? Good. And a second. Second. Thank you. Mr. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Powers? Yeah. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mrs. Wallace? Yes. Mrs. Arthur? Yes. Motion passes. You guys just made a mistake. At this time, we have the superintendent's update. Okay. Thank you. Um, this evening, yep, yeah, I will um, go through teaching and learning facilities and operations that are currently taking place in the district. I'll warn you, it's a little lengthy this evening, so bear with me. <laughs> um, I wanted to comment that Mr. Co Mr. Hayes under teaching and learning has completed a series of many lessons that he has um, collaborated with our instructional coach on. Those many series were um, the teaching and learning initiatives that are tied to our district goals. Those took place before school, just 15 minute mini session where staff could get up to speed on what's happening in the district. Um, those mini sessions have concluded and the follow up sessions will probably focus on math curriculum. So one of the goals um, that under the superintendency here as we have started working towards curriculum pieces that is that we get on a curriculum cycle. And what I mean as part of a curriculum cycle is that you get in that space where one year you're using a majority of your dollars, say on a science adoption and so on and so forth. The next year, potentially math, ELA and so on. You revisit that curriculum on a cycle such that kind of makes me think of our buses, even like it's good to be on a cycle, no matter what topic you're referring to, so that you're not spending all those dollars at once, if you will. So this year in grades four through eight, um, we did just do an adoption, um, just to prove the request actually for a science adoption to be implemented next year. Um, the next piece that we're really going to be looking at is going to be math curriculum. Um, we haven't purchased relevant math, math curriculum in a while. The elementary is looking at two programs right now. They're going to other districts. They're observing in other districts. And so they're kind of exploring those options to pilot something for next year. Um, we just completed a March 10th professional development day in which we also met with the math team in grades four <laughs> through eight and put samples in their hands so that they can also start exploring those two math programs. So we've got some kind of plate spinning all at once. Again, they will probably also pilot and next year will be the year that we do a math adoption. High school is a little different. They're kind of like the singletons, you know, there's algebra one, the publishers like that consistency across pre-K to eight isn't as significant. Algebra one, geometry, algebra two, whatever publisher you pick, the content's gonna be about the same. So the language similar. 
And then our English language arts team, we also met on March 10th to talk about kind of like how we prioritize our work. Is that more about curriculum mapping? Is that more about putting together an instructional framework? Do we need to purchase ELA resources as well? So we're going to start doing some heavy lifting with curriculum work, but in the background, continue to work on exploring some English language arts resources as well, again, as we haven't made that purchase in a while. Um, social studies purchases kind of on an ad, as needed basis. We have those pieces in the district and they're, um, they're satisfying the need at this time. Um, at our last district leadership team meeting, one of the things that we did is we very much explored um, social emotional learning programs that we feel like will check a lot of boxes for us as we support students so that they can be ready. They're ready to learn so they can learn. Um, again, that's something that we want to be consistent across the district so that we're using common language, supporting students in the same ways, but it's also user friendly so that we're not adding to a teacher's plate, but providing the tools to be able to do that. We actually vetted nine programs um, through an activity and we've narrowed that down to three. So now probably going to put together a small group or a committee that's a bit of a spin-off, if you will, from the DLT to really dive more deeply into those three programs to determine how we move forward with an SEL adoption. Um, I continue to meet regularly with Leah Godlove, who is our gifted intervention specialist, and uh, we meet probably about twice a month every other week and continue to update our records, improve our EMUS reporting, and also work on a gifted model um, that better fits our students' needs and also allows for flexibility among the grade levels and grade bands. Um, kindergarten registration is going to be April 4th and 5th. It's right around the corner and families can visit our website to find out what they need for that um, and what additional information on what that process looks like. Um, as required by ODE, our juniors took the ACT on Tuesday, I believe it was. Even with the delay, they got it in there um, in the time that we had um, at the high school. They adjusted schedules to make sure that we were still able to pull that off. Um, as I shared with you last Friday was a professional learning day for staff and the highlights of that were the literacy work that continues to take place at the elementary, the RTI efforts at the elementary. Of course, I already spoke to the vertical grade level meetings and um, March 10th was also our day to really dig into crisis prevention. Um, from a facilities perspective, our new scores table at the high school arrived right after the last basketball games <laughs> this season, but it was on back order. It is here and it is ready to go moving forward. The transportation project at this time is on time. Uh, there is work taking place out there and really once the, like at the completion of the first full week in April, we expect everything to be done. I really have a detailed calendar at this point down to the day as to when the different vendors will be out there doing their work. So it's moving along. Um, maintenance and athletics are working together to make improvements to our spring sport areas. The weather hasn't, you know, really cooperated with us. That's usually the case. And uh, we also know that the baseball field especially um, has been neglected. So making some improvements um, to get up to speed. Uh, the increased use of our school facilities. Actually, we're finding that the, the school facilities are used more often on the weekends and even in the afternoons. So taking a more detailed look at that request for facility um, form and the workflow and making sure that we kind of update our guidelines and make sure they're a little more user friendly as well. We've got some workflow systems placed. We're still in paper, and I think there's some workflow things that we can do to make sure to organize that work. Um, our check-in and check-out stations have been implemented on all three buildings. Um, we are also getting new access controls to the board office here, as opposed to the key entry, the exit doors and badge entry access control will be instituted. All of our old security cameras are going to be replaced at the high school and middle school, both interior and exterior. Um, we have started initial and refreshal TSIP training is taking place in the district now through June. We just had some individuals at a TSIP training, which is um, a crisis response training um, to make sure that our TSIP teams are up to speed and relevant. We continue to work on improving the systems for access to the buildings. Of something that I'm paying special attention to. Our crisis prevention uh, professional learning that took place on Friday really focused on relationships and students, um, interacting with students of trauma, understanding that a cycle of care can still overcome a cycle of violence. And the single most common factor for children who are resilient in the face of trauma is just one, just one, a stable, committed relationship with a supportive adult. And we don't take that responsibility lightly in our schools. 
Um, and ultimately the best way um, to keep students safe is to be present and be aware. Um, our CAT 5 meeting met last night. We reviewed and vetted the studied options remaining for a two, build, two building educational model. Um, our steering meeting, or our steering committee will meet again tomorrow as we pre pre prepare for the community forum next week, which is Wednesday, the 22nd at the high school at six o'clock. And I will remind the board, I hope you're able to make it, but I will also remind you that that will have to be a special meeting. Um, so we'll conduct that the way we did at the last um, community forum. We also thoroughly vetted the LFIs. Um, SHP was helpful in that they took the entire list of LFIs, again, the locally funded initiatives, what we, we would be 100% responsible for in the project. And they gave us a cost analysis of all of what, of what all of those pieces would cost. So outside of narrowing down um, the two building kind of grade band options of how we would like to configure the two buildings, I feel like we, we vetted pretty good as well. Of course, that cost analysis will do that, um, how, what we want to prioritize in terms of moving forward. Um, obviously including kind of what got this whole ball rolling conversation about a field house. Um, and also regarding the community forum in front of you is the postcard that went to every home in the district. Um, it was also a little bit of an interesting journey as there are five zip codes of uh, the work that we did to make sure that everything um, got to a home. And um, thank you, Ms. DeWitt, for making that happen. And because um, it was a short timeline there, but happy that that made it to homes this week. Um, from an operation standpoint, I just wanted to share with you that in the Dayton Daily News, in brief, uh, Mr. Chris Bailey, uh, there was an article here that I've shared with you previously, but it mentioned our new board member, Mr. Chris Bailey. It also highlighted high school students who are helping um, students at the elementary with reading our RAM reads. Um, also, it highlighted the RAM writers competed in the power of the pen. And did you say we had two we had state? Two, two qualify for state. Two qualify for state. Mm -hmm. um, and also the Greenview Elementary PTO Carnival um, there was a small article about that, and the carnival will be this weekend, actually, so be sure to catch that if you'd like, and also just a reference to um, a previous article that I'd also shared with you about the community engagement process um, and how we've been involved in that. Um, the calendar committee met this month to draft the 2023-2024 calendar that is on the board under new business for your approval this evening. I do have copies. Um, it mirrors the calendar from last year. We really did a lot of work last year, making sure that the calendar um, really reflected how we wanted that to look. So it is very similar. We still have four early release days. Um, the days at the holidays are pretty similar. Um, not a lot of changes. Parent-teacher conferences were adjusted such that they are Wednesday in the fall when athletics are heavy. Um, on Tuesday, Thursdays, and then in the spring, we move those to Thursdays. Um, but outside of that, we have the two full professional learning days again. Um, again, pretty, um, pretty similar to what we saw last year. Um, we continue the administrative team. Our cabinet team continues to take a look at the student code of conduct. That work is continual. Um, right now, we are working on looking at the discipline ladder portion of the student code of conduct. We have also updated systems with human resource management, such that our staff records are now online as opposed to all paper pencil. Um, the new staff folders will be ready in May. So we have one system that encompasses staff information, ASOP, as well as our recruiting and hiring pieces. Um, we continue to review and improve where needed also our existing business contracts and service agreements. Um, so as we, I, I hate to say, even sometimes as we run into a problem or an issue and really just, you know, analyzing the service agreements that we have and making sure that they're a best fit for us and our needs. Uh, we were awarded $6,100 for a wellness grant. I think Mrs. Fisher had a lot to do with that. Um, and related, actually, without, without prompting, Mrs. Heather Kasner reached out to me at the beginning of the year and wanted permission to facilitate Zumba lessons for staff. Um, for her lessons, um, we'll be asking for your approval also tonight to compensate her for that. And we're also looking for additional ways in which we can improve staff wellness 
Some ideas include maybe updating or improving the fitness equipment at the high school mezzanine. Um, and I also, I guess, just wanted to give a nod to, I think that's an example of, even though we, you know, we have a skinny staff here, if there are available, if there are grants available to our district that the, this team here, the people that work here, make sure that we do follow the process and give ourselves an opportunity to access such funds. Uh, currently, we're working on one called the Stronger Connections Grant, and actually, that will fit right in with our SEL work, and hopefully, that will be um, a grant, a federal grant that we can use to cover costs there. Um, I did mention, thank you for approving that Doris and Dennis Evers, um, they contributed the $240 to a Life Vac kit. What that is, is it pays for four units. The Life Vac, Life Vac device is a one-time use only airway clearance device, and it's used as a last resort if the Heimlich maneuver is not successful. So the analogy that's been used with me, think of AED versus CPR. So if the Heimlich maneuver is not working effectively, that the Life Vac would be available in each of our facilities. And to close, one final comment, and actually I saw a draft of this today, the, the athletic boosters voted to cover the cost of signage for metal entrance signs at each of the points of interest, entrance uh, to the village. Um, there will be a sign designated for both state and state runner up, and I believe state teams. Um, and then the village is gonna cover the cost of the installation. And I happened to get an email today of a mock-up of a draft of what those signs could look like. So that's really cool. That project is moving forward and much appreciation, especially to boosters, but also to the village for installing that. So very excited about that. I wanna thank them for their efforts. Um, that concludes my superintendent's update. Thank you so much, Dr. Wigan. <clears throat> At this time, we'll move on from the business. A, a pre Green County ESC contract for fiscal year 2023 and 2024 in the amount of $1,100,000. B, approve the 2023-2024 school calendar. And C, approve new business items A and B as presented. I have a motion. I'll move. Thank you. Second. Mrs. Smith. Yes. Mrs. Wallace? Yes. Mrs. Arthur? Yes. Mr. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Powers? Yeah. Motion passes. Okay, we'll move on to personnel. A, approve the following supplemental coaches for the 2022-23 school year. Brian Haynes, spring site manager. Brian Haynes, summer strength coach. Kyle Falk, spring strength coach. John Mark Brooks, head varsity baseball. Robert Gibson, head JV baseball varsity assistant. Chris Reno, head softball. Matt Simpson, head JV softball, varsity assistant. Evan Grooms, head boys tennis. Saul Mulligan, head middle school track. Hannah Lutz, assistant middle school track. Jim Church, assistant middle school track. Tim Arnold, <coughs> head varsity track. Dean Mulligan, assistant high school track. Max Mulligan, assistant high school track. Travis Sacker, assistant high school track. And volunteers, Andrew Reinhardt, high school track assistant. Chris Phillips, assistant baseball, and Michael Polston, assistant baseball. Uh, B, approve the following certified substitutes. C, approve the following classified substitutes for the 2022-23 school year. Bus driver Al Phillips, contingent upon proper certification, background check, and completion of required paperwork. D, approve the resignation of Dean Stewart, high school science teacher, effective June 30th, 2023. E, approve the dock and pay for Jessica Bryant, February 14th, 23, and February 15th, 23, for a funeral. F, approve Heather Catherine to be compensated $1,000 to be paid for staff wellness activities from the EPC Wellness Grant. And G, approve personnel items A through F as presented. Do you have a motion? I'll move. I'll second. Thank you. <clears throat> Mrs. Wallace? Yes. Mrs. Arthur? Yes. Mr. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Powers? Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Motion passes. We do not have any discussion items. At this time, we invite public participation for non-agenda items. If you would like to address the board at this time, uh, comments are um, after three minutes. Mr. Adams? 
My name is Martin Ellis. <clears throat> I'll start with this again. What you permit, you promote. Over this past year, we have tried to work with both the administration and the board to address the sexual harassment and assault that took place in the elementary and middle school that relates to the now fourth graders. While in elementary school last year, a group of third grade boys named corners in the lunchroom, the titty touching corner and the hump corner. Think about that. When this was brought to the attention of the principal, Bill Hayes, we were advised that he had taken care of the situation. Although we were advised by multiple parents and staff in the school who I am friends with that that was not the case. We've been told by staff that he had told them absolutely nothing. Sorry. His only worry at that point in time was to find out who leaked the incident. Not that there was an incident. He went on a witch hunt. Unacceptable. Later on, months, oh my gosh, where am I? Months of emails and with admins led to being advised that it was investigated and sexual assault could not be verified. Ms. Woodruff, uh, we were advised by Ms. Woodruff that the middle school admins and staff would be married, aware of the situations in the elementary school. But in that meeting we had with two admins earlier this year, we were advised that they had no idea. Later on, they had a conversation and then they were still left out of certain information. Fast forward to October, as we were still trying to get this properly investigated, after conversations with admins from the middle school stated it was their job to rebuild that trust. I sent a follow-up email to Ms. Woodruff on October 16th, simply stating that there was a lack of concern for the situations that multiple families were bringing and that we, we, were care we were worried about our children. Coincidentally, four days later, my mother, Sue Ellis, a retired Greenview employee of over 25 years who was certified as a sub by this board earlier in the year, received a call from the secretary of the board stating that she was not needed for her half day of subbing the day before. A couple of days later after that, she received a letter dated October 25th sent from Mrs. Woodruff stating that her upcoming subbing dates of service were no longer needed. This letter also stated that any vacancies for subbing coverage were to open should be notified by a principal. On that same day, she reached out to certain administrators within the middle school asking if they could provide letters of recommendation since she was no longer needed within Greenview for subbing. They were advised that they were no longer allowed to provide her letters of recommendation after they stated that they already would. And we have an email from Ms. Cowart stating she can no longer provide a letter of recommendation. Why is my mom no longer allowed to sub in this district? What is the reason for that? I have, a, I have a very good reason. It's because we're pressing on the sexual assault and harassment issues that you guys are failing to even look into. Absolutely. And that is extremely unacceptable. Mr. Ellis, your time is up, I'm sorry. I'll leave you with this. What you don't address, you approve. Anyone else that would like to address the board on a non-agenda item? <clears throat> I'm Luke Cummings. Um, it's my wife, Melanie. Uh, we're up here. We wish to show support for the board and our administration, but that's uh, not what we're here to do, unfortunately. Um, our child is one of the, ch the children on the long list that have had issues at the elementary and middle school to swept in the rug. rug. We've been ignored, we've been lied to, and we have watched the issues be covered up repeatedly. Our biggest concern happened toward the end of the school year last year. Even upon reporting the issue for the second time in that school year, we received no follow-up. Not until we walked into the building and demanded a meeting with Mr. Hayes did we actually you know, get to talk to him and get a response. Upon reporting the issue, uh, the principal superintendent, Mrs. Woodruff, and the Title IX liaison were told that we would be there would be a formal investigation. However, we were also told not to expect much considering we couldn't prove, provide exact dates, times of the occurrence. Months later, after again having to do the follow-up for answers ourselves, we were told the investigation turned up no results and the issue was considered closed. This left us with multiple questions, especially since not once was our child spoken to during this investigation process. The kid that was assaulted was not spoken to during the investigation process into an assault on him. Uh, 
again follow up after follow up left us with no answers straight ignored in some cases in fact we have an email sent on november 2nd with questions regarding the investigation as well as title nine questions that the superintendent had refused to answer to this day even Upon multiple requests to the child, Title IX liaison, liaison, the superintendent and the middle school principal, our child has not been provided the measures guaranteed to them under Title IX protocols. In fact, we are lied to that these measures had indeed been provided with a simple follow up to ESC, knowing that these measures, these measures required written consent of a parent as well as speaking with their child. We can stay on solid ground knowing that this was a bold faced lie. We are not naive enough to think that any of these administrators will even will ever openly admit to fault or that this board will ever say that protocols and procedures were violated. You're obviously not going to open that door, but there are things you can do and there are ways to make a change. You know this, please stop standing behind the administration with blind trust. Please start asking questions. Ask for, report, ask for reports of proof of investigation. We sincerely hope with parents coming forward, you open your eyes to what is really going on here. There is nothing more difficult than standing up here sharing a child's story that we had no desire to, desire to share. I believe that's exactly what your administration was counting on, for us to be quiet and everybody else to be quiet and to sweep us under the rug. But it's time for change. Our administration and schools cannot continue to operate this way. Please. Please make a change for our kids in these schools. We have an amazing community with truly, truly amazing youth. Please give them a school system worthy of them. Mr. Give them an administration that fights for them, not against them. Mr. Cummings, your time is up. Thank you. I'm sorry. Okay, well, I'm done now. Okay. No. Anyone else that wishes to address the board? It's obvious that this board has issues. If you can remember at the beginning of the executive session last month, I asked that the video be played by Mrs. Woodruff. She stated something to the effect of, you're not going to be able to see much because of the angle. That's when I stated that if she went to the upper right-hand corner towards the basketball icon, she could move and adjust the camera for a better view. Sir. You she are commenting on, on, no, you're coming on events in executive session somewhere. that are not for public forum. You cannot, you cannot talk about executive session in public forum. She previously viewed the assault. Oh. I say this because this was her way of not showing the full scale of the assault. There was another view from behind Kylie that shows a better image and is a, was closer and has less students obstructing the view. I question Mrs. Woodruff's integrity regarding the transparency of you this incident. You can't, you can't comment on things in executive session. Okay, that, that paragraph is over. I'll move on. At the last board meeting on February 16th, there was no assaults that took place, nor there was there any injuries <clears throat> from anyone that attended that meeting. However, there was two sheriff's deputies and one Jamestown cruiser in your parking lot. But on December 2nd, there was a violent assault that happened in one of your school buildings and a student did receive an injury, but no one was called. That just proved to us that the safety of our kids isn't important, but if the board feels threatened, they want to be safe. Great job, Greenview. Also, it's inter interesting to me that while looking at the bullying reports for the 2022-2023 first semester for the middle school, there were 11 bullying investigations with zero confirmed incidents. There were six harassment investigations and zero of those were confirmed. That's a total of 17 complaints and zero were confirmed. Looks like the middle school students are a bunch of liars. But wait, my daughter was assaulted on December 2nd, which is in the first semester of this school year. And you watched the video last month and there were still no confirmed incidents. I say to you now, who is lying? There are three of you on this board that I voted for. Sorry, Megan, I didn't know you la until last month. Chris, you haven't been voted in yet. I voted for you guys to represent me and my family. Remember, you guys work for those who put you in this position, not for the superintendent. Ms. Calworth and Ms. Woodruff both work for the board, hold them accountable for the response to the assault. We have called Jamestown home since 1998 <clears throat> and have supported every school levy that has been on this ballot. I will never support this school system again until this board starts holding its administration accountable. In fact, I will do everything in my power to make sure that this next levy fails. 
until integrity, transparency, and honesty has been restored, my vote moving forward will be a no. In November, there's 39 views at the school board meeting. December had 17. Mr. Hatton. January had 50. Mr. Hatton, your time is up. What's your, November, name? What's your name, please? Alex Hackney. In November, there are 39 views of the school board meeting. December had 17 views. January had 50 views, but the last month's meeting had 467 views. There may not have been a huge crowd at the last meeting, but as you can see by the numbers, you can tell people are watching. There are numerous residents concerned with how this has handled and the slow response to notify us, and in some cases, fail to notify all. This was mishandled from the moment it happened. It was treated as if it was a fight between students. In that case, witness statements and interviews should take place to further investigate who started it and who took and why it took place. However, you saw the video where a defenseless girl was pulled to the ground by her hair and violently punched and kicked for over 20 seconds. Witness statements and due process was put before the safety of my daughter. The nurse did check her, but she never knew the extent of her attack. The nurse never saw the video or was told that Kyla received over 30 blows to the head. It took over an hour to be contacted, and even when Kyla complained of head pain and wanted to go home, it still took 33 minutes to call parents. And you stated to us in your response that administrators acted reasonably under the circumstances. I am appalled that the board thinks this has handled, that this was handled appropriately. A new policy violation is 8403, which deals with the school resource officer. The policy states that the memorandum of understanding shall be available on the district's website. I have searched the district's website endlessly and it's not there. Mrs. Arthur had to send it to me in a separate email. This mem whatever is basically a contract between the village and the school district to provide uniformed police officers for 120 hours per week during time school is in session. This was not the case on December 2nd and the board rec board's recommendation to pull the officer from the elementary school when a vacancy exists at the middle school, well, that's not the answer either. As my mom would say, you're stealing from Peter to pay Paul. That is definitely not the solution to cover vacancies. In closing, the board has ultimately made its decision and I am reading this to you. I have made mine. I am looking forward to having Ms. Calloworth, Mrs. Woodruff, and others to be deposed for further action. Anyone else? Different subject. My name is Ryan Esau. Uh, you don't need my address, do you? We used to do that. Um, I took it upon myself recently to donate, to do community service, 140 hours, 20 weeks, eight hours a day. And it was really enlightening to me. And I think, I talked to my mom about it and they, she said she was a guidance counselor at uh, Montgomery County Career Center. She said lots of schools have where to graduate, you have to do so much community service. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that lacks with kids today and lacks with our community of donating back your time. And I think that would be a good consideration to think about of kids having to donate time anywhere in Green County, just in the county, of maybe two to three hours for freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior year to be able to graduate. That's it. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. I have a question. Brandon Maxey. Um, is it made public uh, when you guys went into executive session how you guys voted on the issue? Is it made public to how you guys, how the board members voted? Because it says in the minutes that it's supposed to be available, executive session votes are supposed to be available. There, there was no voting. Voting. There there was was voting in executive no, session. No, it was voted in the regular meeting. It was voted in okay. the regular meeting. Okay. They all voted yes. Mrs. Hackney, 
Would you please refrain from using specific names? Well, I switched it all. I, I, yeah. All right. Um, I just don't even know what to say because it's not going to matter. It has to happen to you for it to matter. I don't know how to make it matter to you guys. What's it going to take? I'll read this to you guys in the parking lot because that's just going to be it. So it doesn't matter. The most precious possessions in our life don't matter. Are you not sick of there any motion motion to Is there anyone else? Okay, I'd like to call for a motion to adjourn the meeting, please. I'll move. I'll second. Thank you. Mrs. Wallace? Yes. Mrs. Arthur? Yes. Mr. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Powers? No. Yeah. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Motion passes. We are adjourned at 657. <laughs> I did, and I we have not rotated it. Sorry, I just need to check in a minute.